Well, in this lecture, we shall discuss electrostatic waves in a magnetized plasma, including thermal effects, and we will consider these waves to be of low frequency, like the ion acoustic wave, ion cyclotron wave, and magnetosonic wave. Well, magnetosonic wave is primarily an electromagnetic wave, but it gives rise to charge compression rear effection and hence uh, it has a very strong electrostatic character as well. Uh, we will discuss uh, the validity of fluid approximation when we include thermal effects. We will drive a dispersion relation for low frequency electrostatic wave, then discuss ion acoustic mode, ion cyclotron mode and then we will start afresh and discuss magnetosonic wave. Well, these are the references, three books by Stex, Kral, Triple Peace and Chen. In my last lecture, I was talking to you about electrostatic waves in a cold plasma and in a cold plasma, I ignored the pressure term in the equation of motion. So, pressure term was ignored well this is all right as long as the velocity of phase velocity of waves is much bigger than thermal velocity and I mentioned two approximations that when omega by k z is much bigger than the electron thermal velocity and Larmor radius of the electrons and ions in ions in particular k per pro i this was much less than 1. Then this is a good approximation. However, a great variety of waves in plasmas they may satisfy this condition, but this condition is not satisfied especially for ion acoustic wave and for ion cyclotron waves, we have a situation omega is less than k z v thermal of electrons. Ion thermal velocity may be ignored because that is too small, but the waves may have parallel phase velocity less than thermal velocity of electrons and what is the consequence? The consequence is that if there is a magnetic field in the system. and the wave is going at some angle, this is k vector of the wave, this angle is theta. If this theta, well if k z is significant and significantly large, it means that the wave phase varies or the speed of phase propagation along z direction is less than V thermal, then what can happen? that the electrons can quickly follow the variations in potential of the wave and their response becomes adiabatic. Adiabatic response means what? This is called Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. It says that if density perturbation will be of the order of equilibrium density into E phi upon T. How do we deduce this? because we know that if my wave has a potential phi, charge of the electron is minus E, then N anywhere should vary as this is perturbed density, this actual density should be like N 0 exponential minus potential energy P E upon temperature of the electron T E. This is called Maxwell Boltzmann law that if you have a potential potential energy distribution in the system, the electrons will have a tendency to go to those regions where potential energy is minimum. And if I put the value of potential energy as minus E phi, this becomes N 0 exponential of E phi upon T E. If this quantity is less than 1, this can be approximated as N 0 into 1 plus E phi upon T E. Hence, the perturbed, this is called the equilibrium density, this is the perturbed density, which is so much. 
So electrons can follow the variations in phase of the wave, just like in an ion acoustic wave when we talked about uh, this wave in an unmagnetized plasma. So this is an important condition. And consequently, the ion response becomes totally different as compared to the electron res uh, ion response. They are totally different. Ions and electron response are very different because of their thermal velocities. So let me examine the effect of temperature on waves in the limit that Larmor radius is still satisfy this condition that k per rho i is less than 1. In this limit I would like to evaluate this and we will be interested essentially in waves of frequencies less than or comparable to omega p i and I will be considering the case where k z v thermal of electrons is much bigger than omega. Let us examine uh, I will consider the electron response. So, let me write down first the potential of an electrostatic wave which is phi is equal to a exponential minus i omega t minus k x x minus k z z. I have chosen k y equal to 0 without any loss of generality because I can choose my x and z axis according to my choice. So, z axis I am choosing along the magnetic field B s is parallel to z axis and this is my x axis and k vector the wave is some angle here. The electron response I will straight away take as n 1 is equal to n 0 e phi upon T e where T is the electron temperature. As far as the ion response is concerned I will revert back to the old derivation in my last lecture I had obtained that if I consider ions to be cold in that case ion density perturbation due to this wave turns out to be equal to n 0 e k x square upon into phi upon m i omega i square minus omega c i e square and there was omega there and then there was a term because of this n 0 e k z square upon m i omega i square and phi. I think this omega is not there. So, this was the ion density perturbation, this is the electron density perturbation, use them in the Poisson equation which is del square phi is equal to into epsilon 0 is equal to e times n 1 minus n 1 i just substitute it there and you get a dispersion relation which is 1 plus omega p i square upon k square C s square, I will define C s in a little while. This is the electron contribution or electron susceptibility minus you will get omega p i a square upon omega a square minus omega C i a square k x square by k square minus omega p i a square upon omega a square k x square by k square equal to 0, where C s I have defined as under root of T e upon ion mass, electron temperature upon ion mass, omega p i is the 
ion plasma frequency which is n 0 e square upon m i epsilon 0 to the power half omega c i is the ion cyclotron frequency which is e b s upon m i. This dispersion relation obviously will have two roots, it is a biquadratic omega square, it will have two roots. It can be cast in a simpler form because when we are looking for low frequency waves like ion acoustic wave, then we are looking for omega of the order of KCS, which is significantly smaller than omega pi. So, it is better to multiply this equation by k square c s square by omega p i square. So, multiply the dispersion relation by k square c s square upon omega p i square. Then that equation takes the following form. one plus k square c s square by omega p i square this is a small minus k z square c s square upon omega square minus k x square c s square upon omega square minus omega c i square is equal to 0 and I may call this quantity as alpha prime which is close to unity. In that case this equation takes this following form I can cast this into the form of a quadratic equation which gives you alpha prime omega 4 minus omega square omega c i square alpha prime plus k square c s square plus omega c i square k z square c s square is equal to 0 and this gives me two roots which is omega square is equal to 1 upon twice alpha prime multiplied by omega c i square alpha prime plus k square c s square plus minus under root square of this omega c i square alpha prime plus k square c s square whole square minus 4 alpha prime from here and this sector which is omega c i square into k z square c s square this whole thing. This factor is multiplying here inside the square root. There are two signs one is called the upper sign is called ion acoustic wave the lower wave I will call simply a low frequency mode whose frequency can be comparable to omega c i as well. If I choose I think uh, this can one can plot this, but in a special case when either of these conditions are satisfied that for either k z is much less than k means for propagation perpendicular nearly perpendicular to magnetic field then this term can be taken to be small or if k z c s is significantly less than omega c i because this is omega c i term or k c s is 
bigger than omega c i. In either of these cases, this equation simplifies and this is a very, so if your frequency you are expecting around k c s, if it is much bigger than omega c i, then this expression simplifies to, if k c s is bigger than k c, this, then this simplifies for the plus sign to, let me just say, when either of these conditions are satisfied, this or this or this, in that case this dispersion relation gives you two roots, one is called omega i square is equal to k square c s square plus omega c i square. So, when omega is bigger than omega c i, this is like ion acoustic wave. And second case, when omega i square or the second root is omega i square is equal to k z square c s square into omega c i square divided by omega c i square plus k square c s square. So, what I have done in order to obtain the second root with a negative sign, the second term the under root was taken to be small as compared to the first term and I had expanded the under root using binomial expansion. And this can be rewritten as k z square c s square divided by 1 plus k square c s square upon omega c i square. Now, there are two distinct roots. So, if I plot them omega versus omega here and I let me plot k z c s here. What you get here that suppose there is a frequency I will call this omega c i somewhere here and omega p i somewhere here. Well, this dispersion I have written in the limit when I have taken k c s less than omega p i. If I do not take this, then I have already given the general relation omega square is equal to something, you plot it from there. And what you get is that the upper root has a frequency higher than this quantity depending on how much k per p you choose. It starts somewhere here and goes to omega p i. Whereas, if I plot the second root, it starts from k z equal to 0. So, omega is becomes nearly small and it has a tendency to go towards omega c i. So, well, the approximation that I made is not really valid when this becomes larger, but basically there is a this is a lower frequency root, this is a higher frequency root. I will call this the ion acoustic wave. And this is a mode if the frequency is in the vicinity of omega c i, it becomes a ion cyclotron mode. If it is smaller, then the, this mode is called low frequency mode. So, you get different modes. However, we have excluded a very broad category of modes because of this restriction that k per pro i has to be much less than 1. If you include the thermal effects in, on ions and finite larm radius effects, you get a much richer variety of modes. So, especially I would suggest that when we are talking about the lower frequency modes like these modes, finite larm radius corrections are very important and the character dramatically changes for these modes. However, as far as the ion acoustic mode is concerned, omega is primarily like k c s, this term is usually small and this is a sound wave which certainly exists. And uh, well obviously, I have 
done this in this limit, but the highest frequency sound wave can take like is omega p i. Well, these modes have been observed in many devices, they are driven unstable by a variety of mechanisms, parametric instabilities can drive them, beams can drive them, ion beams can drive them unstable, electron current can drive them unstable and whenever they are produced in a plasma, they give rise to anomalous resistivity because some phonons are produced in the plasma which can give rise to a stronger collisional momentum loss of the charged particles and can cause enhancement in resistivity of the plasma. Now, before I close, I would like to go over to a different kind of mode which is electromagnetic in character, but behaves like an electrostatic wave because it gives rise to very strong charge compression. It is some sort of uh, a compression Elfin wave. So, I am going to talk about a particular mode which is called magnetosonic wave. This dispersion relation is similar to sound wave dispersion relation, <coughs> but it has a different character. Consider a plasma with magnetic field along z axis and I am considering propagation of a wave purely in the perpendicular direction to it. Suppose this is my k vector of the wave and I choose and that has to be self consistently chosen and we will find self consistently later on that if I choose a wave of electric field say E parallel to y perpendicular to the plane of this board and this is my x axis. So, if I choose an electromagnetic wave travelling normal to the low frequency EM wave whose frequency I will choose to be less than omega c i, maybe one less than omega c i, I am cyclotron frequency and let this wave be polarized perpendicular to the plane of the paper. What will it do? This electrons and ions will experience a E cross B motion and E cross B motion will be in this direction. So, if the electrons and ions move in this direction, obviously if the velocity of this wave is less than c, much much less than c sound the velocity of light in free space, then that will can give rise to very significant amount of charge compression and rarefaction. So, because of the E cross B motion when the electrons acquire a longitudinal velocity longitudinal to k then there is a charge compression rarefaction and if thermal motions are important then the electron charge compression may not cancel with the ion charge compression the imbalance could be significant. But this wave will also because this has a perpendicular electric field it will give rise to perpendicular current as well polarization current and that can sustain this this mode. So, this is a mode that gives rise to density compression as well as oscillatory velocity or polarization current in the direction transverse to the propagation. Let us examine the character of this mode. I choose E is equal to y cap A exponential minus i omega t minus k x. Then for the electrons, I solve the equation of motion and the equation of motion if I forget collisions, but include the pressure term the equation is m delta v by delta t minus v dot del v is equal to minus e e minus v thermal square sorry not this t 
T of the electron upon density equilibrium density into gradient of n. This is the equation of motion, but there is a magnetic field term also which is minus E V cross B S. There is a wave magnetic field also, but the product of perturbed velocity and perturbed magnetic field I will ignore, otherwise I should include that term also. So, if I presume that my plasma does not have a equilibrium drift velocity, that term is not there. And as I mentioned that in equilibrium there is no drift velocity. So, I can write down this this v is equal to v 0 plus v 1 the perturbed velocity. I substitute it back ignore the products of perturbed quantities and this equation then takes the simple form. I am going to be a little quick on this. I will substitute this in this this term will survive delta delta t I will replace by minus i omega as I have been doing often. This del I will replace by i k when this operates over n and I will write down as n 0 plus n 1 perturbed density perturbed velocity and then this equation takes the following form minus i omega v 1 plus omega c v 1 cross z cap is equal to minus E e upon m minus v thermal square into i k n 1 upon n 0. And the equation of continuity which is delta n by delta t plus divergence of n v equal to 0 on linearization takes the form delta n 1 by delta t plus divergence of n 0 v 1 equal to 0 and on replacing this by i k this by minus i omega this gives me n 1 is equal to n 0 k dot v 1 upon omega and since k is in the x direction this simply means n 0 k v 1 x upon omega. Now, it is easy for me to substitute this n 1 in terms of v 1 x. So, that this equation decouples from n equation. So, let me just substitute it in there and my equation takes the following form minus i omega v 1 plus omega c v 1 cross z cap is equal to minus E E upon m and minus V thermal square I k is there n 1 upon n 0 from here it would be k V 1 x upon omega. I write down the x component of this equation. Please remember E, e does not have a x component, I am taking only V y, so, but this k has x components, so this will contribute and this gives me minus i omega into V 1 x, bring this also on the left hand side, so it becomes 1 minus k square V thermal square upon omega square multiplied by V 1 x, this gives me plus v 1 y omega c is equal to this term which has no x component. So, this is 0 and y component gives me this term will give me please remember this has no y component k is in the x direction. So, this does not exist, but this will be finite. 
So, for the y component this equation gives me minus i omega v 1 by minus omega c v 1 x is equal to minus e e x upon m. This equation is interesting and uh, what you get is usually for magnetic sonic wave k v thermal is much bigger than omega. So, I will ignore this one as compared to this two. You can solve these equations. My goal is to find out the current in the y direction, the direction of electric field because I want to sustain that. So, I want to solve these equations to I will eliminate v 1 x and obtain v 1 y. The result is if I, ob I obtain v 1 y is equal to simply this expression v 1 y turns out to be equal to minus i e e y upon m omega into k square v thermal square upon omega c square. This is the value of electron oscillatory velocity in the y direction. For the ions, I will get the similar procedure for ions will give me V 1 i have a y component is equal to minus E E y upon m i omega c i square into i omega here into 1 minus k square v thermal i square upon omega i square. For electrons I could assume k v thermal much bigger than omega for ions this is small. So, I have to retain this ratio this term. Now, I may write down the current density perturbed current density j 1 or simply j let me call j y. This is equal to minus n 0 e v 1 y due to the electrons and due to ions will be n 0 e v 1 i y this is the ion contribution. When I substitute these values of v 1 y and v 1 i y in these expressions I get perturbed current density turns out to be i times n 0 e square upon m omega k square v thermal square upon omega c square e y is the electron contribution the ion term turns out to be minus i n 0 e square upon m i omega c i square and omega up here into 1 minus k square v thermal of ion square upon omega square multiplied by E y equal to 0. The interesting part is that this m into omega c square and v thermal square these three combination this factor. and this factor here v thermal i square upon m i omega c i square they are roughly same because I can write down v thermal square upon m omega c square is equal to this is T e upon m this is how I define thermal velocity square and one m is there. So, it becomes m square omega this omega c square is e square b s square upon m square. So, what I am saying is that m square cancels out what I can do I can multiply this equation by m i square upon m is m i square and this can be written as v thermal 
of i n square into T e upon T i upon m i omega c i square exactly. So, this is a important comparison of this term with the similar term here and except for this temperature ratio of electron temperature to ion temperature these two terms are of same value and of same sign minus minus becomes plus the same sign. When you do carry out this in here and try to express n 0 e square upon m i as multiply epsilon 0 is equal to omega p i e square. Then the current density turns out to be simply j y is turns out to be equal to minus i epsilon 0 into omega p i e square upon omega c i e square omega multiplied by 1 minus k square c s square upon omega square e y. So, this is a very simple expression for current density. Thermal effects have been carefully included in here in the limit that I have taken omega much less than k v thermal and omega also to be less than omega c i this is what we have assumed. In that limit, the perturbed current density is so much and let us simplify, I rather substitute this in the Maxwell's equations. What do we get? Let me begin with the, let me first deduce the Maxwell equation, the wave equation. You begin with the third Maxwell equation which is curl of E is equal to delta B by delta T with the negative sign and replace delta delta t by minus i omega. So, this becomes is equal to i omega mu 0 h and now you take the fourth Maxwell equation which is curl of h, curl of h is equal to j plus delta d by delta t, but d is epsilon 0 e in plasmas and delta delta t is minus i omega. So, it gives me j minus i omega epsilon 0 into e. Take curl of this equation and use this equation you will get curl of curl of e is equal to i omega mu 0 curl of h which is this expression. So, j minus i omega epsilon 0 e. When I put the and this curl curl of e I can simplify as minus del e square of e plus gradient divergence of e. So, this equation can be it is written as minus del e square of E plus gradient divergence of E. This is equal to if you just put the value of j, then this becomes equal to omega e square by C e square E due to the last term and this becomes minus well let me write this as i omega by c square epsilon 0 j. Let me first write this in this form then value of j I will substitute little later. Del square I can write down as minus k square. So, del I replace by i k x cap in, in this equation and this gives me for the y component. First let me write this. This gives me k square e vector minus k and k dot e 
is equal to omega square by c square e minus i omega by c square epsilon 0 j. Write down the y component of this equation. This will give me, please remember k does not have a y component. So, this term is not having any y component. This will give me k square e y is equal to omega a square by c square e y minus this term i omega by c square epsilon 0 j y. Now, use the value of j y and you will get omega a square by c square e y the first term and this gives me minus epsilon 0 cancels out omega p i a square upon c square omega c i a square then you will get omega a square into 1 minus k square c square by omega a square into e y e y will cancel out from both sides you will get the dispersion relation. Please note when I take this omega a square in, inside this will cancel with this omega a square. So, what you can do these two are the omega square dependent terms the left hand side and the last term are independent omega terms they can combine can be combined together. So, what do you get when you combine these you get k square minus omega a square by c square is equal to omega a square upon v alpha n square. I will just define this v alpha into 1 minus k square c s square by omega a square v alpha n is simply is equal to c omega c i upon omega p i. So, bring the omega independent terms on the left hand side you will get k square into 1 plus sound velocity square upon v alpha velocity square is equal to omega a square by c square into 1 plus c square upon v alpha n square and this gives the dispersion relation omega a square is equal to k square c square multiplied by v alpha n square plus c s square upon alpha n velocity square plus c square. Usually in plasmas v alpha n is much much less than c the velocity of light in free space you can ignore this v a square then the c square will cancel with the c square and this is approximately equal to k square into c s square plus v alpha n square. This is the interesting wave. It propagates across the magnetic field. It carries energy and momentum across the magnetic field. And the phase velocity of this wave is omega by k of the order of alpha n velocity. Usually alpha n velocity is bigger than c s. So, this travels across the magnetic field. I would consider this to be some 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 modification of alpha n wave due to thermal effects. C s contains the effect of actually I forgot to define C s. C s is defined as T e plus T i upon m i. this is the thermal velocity if under root of this quantity is the actually sound speed in a plasma. So, this is a some sort of a modification of alpha velocity alpha wave compressor alpha wave by the presence of thermal effects finite temperature of electrons and ions and phase velocity well if you want to calculate the pointing vector or average energy flow always you can calculate by using E cross H. Since 
for this mode electric field is perpendicular to k h is always finite and this is always finite half this is star if I want to calculate this put a star here. So, the average power flow obviously this will be parallel to k perpendicular to magnetic field and these waves can carry momentum and energy across the magnetic field and hence they are very important waves. I forgot to mention something about the low frequency electrostatic waves in two species plasma. Uh, in my last lecture I was talking to you about uh, cold plasma limit for the electrostatic waves and uh, in the cold plasma limit the dispersion relation for the low frequency mode turns out to be let me just give the there is the important thing. Uh, I consider the case when omega is less than or comparable to omega C i and uh, I found a mode actually the dispersal relation was simply equal to 1 plus omega p i omega p square upon omega c square minus omega p square by omega square k z square upon k square minus omega p i square upon omega square minus omega c i square k x square upon k square minus omega p i square k z square upon omega square k square this is equal to 0. This is the dispersion relation that we derived in the cold plasma limit for waves of frequency much less than um, electron segment frequency. This is the only term otherwise this would be omega square minus omega or rather omega c square minus omega square. This was the relation we had obtained last time. Here if you had a plasma like deuterium tritium in which there are two ion spaces then you will get two terms due to ions. The thing is if you are talking of low frequencies at low frequencies if k z is very small you can ignore the electron term here and usually in plasmas omega p is less than omega c. So, this is like this this is of the order unity. So, these terms are small then these terms must balance each other in the vicinity of omega equal to omega c i these terms must balance each other. And if k z is tiny this term is negligible one term cannot balance itself. But if there are two spaces two ion species then one ion term could be positive another ion term could be negative and there is a possibility of a new mode of wave propagation. And so, in a two species plasma two ion species plasma a new mode exists. And let me generalize this dispersion relation to a two species plasma. What I should do for each species, let me define a plasma frequency. Suppose the density of one ion species is N01 and charge of this species is Z1E, this is charge. So, this is density into charge square upon M. 1 is the mass of one ion species into epsilon 0. And for second ion species I can define similarly ion plasma frequency of second species is equal to density of second species ion species charge of the second ion species upon mass of the second ion species and epsilon 0. 
let me just define what are these quantities n 0 1 the density of ions of space ion space is 1 and z 1 e is the charge of ion space is 1. Similar quantities are n 0 2 and z 2 for the second species. And how about the cyclone frequency? I have to multiply define cyclone frequency of species 1 as z 1 e b s upon m 1 and similarly omega c 2 for second species I will define. Once you define each of these two terms will be split into two terms corresponding to two ion species and I am looking for a possibility let me just write these this modified dispersion relation would be 1 plus omega p square by omega c square minus omega p square upon omega a square k z square by k square minus omega p 1 square upon omega square minus omega c 1 square k x square by k square minus omega p 2 square upon omega square minus omega c 2 square k x square by k square minus omega p 1 square plus omega p 2 square upon omega square k z square by k square is equal to 0. Suppose my first species is deuterium and second species is say one species is deuterium and second species of ions is tritium then obviously omega c 1 is bigger than omega c 2 because mass of deuterium is less than mass of the tritium. What will happen out of these two terms if I choose my omega in between these two frequencies omega c 2 and omega c 1 in that case if omega is less than omega c 1 this term will be positive and if omega is bigger than omega c 2 this term is negative and these two terms can balance each other. So, when k z is nearly 0 I can ignore this term this term and this is too small because they are of the order of unity while these terms could be much bigger. So, what I am saying is that there is a possibility of an electrostatic wave where these two terms can balance each other and when they will balance each other this factor is common the frequency you can obtain by saying that omega p 1 is square upon omega square minus omega c 1 is square is equal to omega p 2 is square upon omega square minus omega c 2 is square with a negative sign and that gives the frequency of the mode and that is a very interesting thing. This is a very interesting mode and it turns out to have a frequency same thing like this if I simplify this you can obtain the frequency which is in between this range and this frequency is called upper hybrid this is called ion ion hybrid frequency ion ion hybrid frequency obviously this mode does not have a frequency exactly equal to ion hybrid frequency alone it can have a frequency because this is a dispersion relation you can obtain omega as a function of k x or k z. So, for a k z equal to 0 this is the hybrid frequency frequency when k z is equal to 0 exactly, but when k z is finite the frequency could differ from an ion hybrid frequency and I think uh, this is a very important mode which is used for heating ions in tokamak using ion cyclotron waves. So, you choose a frequency of the your signal 
or uh, uh, RF wave equal to the ion hybrid frequency. Let me simplify this expression and give the final expression. It turns out to be omega I square is equal to omega C1 I square into 1 plus m1 upon m2 n01 upon n02 z1 upon z2 divided by 1 plus m2 upon m1 n01 upon n02 z1 upon z2. The difference in these two is m1 upon m2 here and m2 upon m1 here. This is the ion ion hybrid frequency and this mode is very interesting mode. It has been found to be very useful for heating tokamak. I think we have talked substantially in detail uh, the electrostatic waves in the fluid approximation. I think uh, probably now we have to move to kinetic description or kinetic theory to discuss the effects of finite Larmor radius and resonant wave particle interactions like the phenomena like Landau damping. Probably we shall discuss that in our future lectures. Thank you very much.